Okay, this question says the author of the passage mentions the classical conception of free will primarily in order to do what? So it's a good idea to look in the passage where it says free will. What's going on with free will? Well, the classical conception of free will, basically, it said that we have W, which is, okay, I am perceiving myself having the intention of moving my hand, followed by the neurons lighting up in your brain that are going to move your hand. They call that RP, followed, of course, by simply the movement M of the hand. Now, this is the classical conception, but that's not what they found. They found a direct contradiction as far as these two went. And you can find this direct, con uh, direct contradiction mentioned in line 13. And so because of that, the results of the experiment were surprising because they went against free will. And now that we've come up with our own answer, using, of course, our own words, we can match. And let's start with answer choice A. Argue that earlier theories regarding certain brain processes were based on false assumptions. Okay, so you may think, oh, false assumptions, something was wrong. But is that the same as saying, oh, this was surprising. This conception of free will is what we expected, but the results, experimental results, were different. They surprised us. That is not the same as A. So don't just kind of look at huh, false assumptions and think, therefore, that is correct, because it's saying that our early th theories regarding certain brain processes were based on false assumptions. We don't necessarily know that for sure, so we get rid of A. B, suggest the possible flaw in the reasoning of neuroscientists conducting the study discussed in the passage. Again, it's a flaw because this isn't what we thought would happen, but you see words like false assumptions and flaw, they're trying to trap you because you know that the conception of free will didn't quite match up with the experimental results, but does that mean it's flawed or false? No, it was simply something that surprised that researchers found that and even said, if you look here directly at line number 13, it says, surprise. And so that's how you want to work through these questions. You answer them in your own words, find those keywords. And now that we work through it, we can get to see, provide a possible explanation for the unexpected results obtained by neuroscientists. So you can see that, oh, that's probably why they found it unexpected, because for them, they were basing their assumptions on the free will, on the conception of free will, and because that conception wasn't actually what turned out to be the case with the experiment. It was surprising or unexpected, and therefore C, let's get rid of B, never did that, but therefore C is our answer. Look at D, cast doubt. Again, there's a doubt, there's a flaw, something's not right, but you want to look at the entire answer. Cast doubt on neuroscientists' conclusion regarding temporal sequence of brain processes. No, they're just mentioning conception of free will because it surprised them that it didn't bear out in this experiment. Finally, E, indicate the reason that the results of the neuroscientist study were surprising. Okay, well now, interesting. Didn't I just say, oh, we had the word surprising. Doesn't this mean that this must be the answer? Well, no, because surprising is simply one part of answer E. What does the whole answer say? Well, it says indicate the reason that the results of the neuroscientists were surprising. Is that why he mentioned free will? Well, no, he was wanting to show us that they were unexpected. They weren't quite the same as surprise. So let's get rid of that, and there's our answer again is C.